Praise the Lord and good evening, good evening, good evening. I am so, oh my God, I am so excited that you took time out of your schedule to join me on tonight. Listen, just go ahead and drop in the chat. You all that were with me this morning, listen, we had so many technical difficulties this morning. Oh my God, I had one, I had actually this laptop out. I was just talking and then people started chatting. We can't hear you, we can't hear you. Had to log off that one, log back in that one. Still couldn't hear me. Went, hold on, y'all. Went and got a whole nother laptop, reset everything up, logged in again. Everybody could hear me. Listen, got off the line, <laughs> pulled the laptop that wasn't working out, logged in it, and you could hear perfectly fine. I'll listen, the devil, Satan, Lucifer, the father of lies, was so angry about the word of the Lord that I that God gave us on this morning. So normally what I do is when I, on our prayer weeks, which is this week, we're in prayer and fasting for our Friday night service. So normally whatever I do in the morning, I would just air it tonight. You would get the replay. But the reason why I'm on here tonight live doing something uh, is because this morning we flow, Holy Spirit took over. I had a prophetic dream. I urge you, I beg you, I encourage you after you after we get off of this live go back and look at the live from this morning it was strictly nothing but the prophetic god gave me a dream on last night and and it just i woke up weeping and wailing it was i woke up around 4 a.m weeping and wailing for the people of god for myself for my children for my family so if you have not seen that that the dream was so specific it, it was i knew the location i knew the people i knew everything about this so you have to listen to this live it is a warning i'm gonna tell you right now it is a warning but if you listen to the live if you listen to what holy spirit was saying if you listen to how he was warning us you will be perfect you will be prepared for what is to come listen you have to listen to that live some of you might need to listen again get actually if you heard it this morning you need to put that one as one of your saved as one of your saved lives that you might need to go back to at a different time. Listen, I am so excited about the word of the Lord on tonight. Tonight, I am going to actually be um, teaching what the Lord gave me for this week. The, this week, the whole thing that we were going to, that God has us talking about is the power of rejection. Go ahead and drop it in the chat. The power of rejection. The power of rejection. The power of rejection. Listen, in life, it is not something that it rejection is not something that may happen to you or you can live life and it never happens. No, no, no. Rejection is going to happen to you. It is a fact. Before you leave this earth, you will experience rejection. So I want to jump right into this um, because all my notes just keep saying prayer calls. So I can get confused. But listen, I want to jump right into this word on tonight. Let's open up with the word of prayer. Father God, I thank you in advance for every listener. I thank you for Holy Spirit endowing me with the word of knowledge. I thank you for Holy Spirit being with us tonight, speaking to us tonight. Dear God, I ask that you would anoint the ears of every listener, that they would hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. I pray, God, I pray, I pray that when I open my mouth, you speak that these words come alive to your children, your people. Dear God, we thank you in advance for a prophetic word on tonight. We thank you in advance, dear God, for wisdom and knowledge and understanding and clarity on tonight. We thank you on tonight, God, because we know that your word, it cannot return into you, unto you, void, but it shall accomplish everything, 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 everything you sent it out to do. If you agree with that prayer, go ahead and drop in the chat. Amen and amen. Listen, so so on, on this um, week, because I'll be back on, we're doing the prayer call as well this week. So we'll be on the prayer call at 6 a.m., not 5.30 because it's summertime. I'm, try, I look, I'm trying to get, give you a little 30 more, 30 more minutes. So we will be uh, back here in the morning, 6 a.m. And also on Friday, we'll be um, 604 Doug May's place. It's on the bottom of the screen. You don't want to miss this Friday. Uh, first of all, because the Lord is going to meet us there. It's always different. If, if I know some of y'all caught the snippet, you caught the live from last time. It was like, oh my God, what happened? Everybody running. Oh my God, what happened? It's different every time. It's a difference when you are in the place at that set time. It is telling God that I am in expectation of what you promised me. I am in expectation of a move from you. You cannot get, you, you will not experience 
what we experience when we're there. You will not experience that watching it on the live. First of all, because it's really not live when you see it. By the time I post it, you're looking at the residue. You're looking at what we already experienced. We 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 have experienced it on Friday. You may see it Monday if God say so. Because I'm not going live actually at the place, at the location anymore. God told me to stop all that. He said, because it's time for people to grow up and make a decision. If you want to be there, you'll be there. If not, you can catch the residue. Amen, somebody. So listen, so Friday night and actually Friday night, the 23rd will be, we won't be together again because I know I can, I can tell some people are picking and choosing. Well, I'm going to go on the first one when she had a first one. I'm going to go when she had a third one. I'm going to go on it. Listen, we will not be back together again. So we have it Friday, June 23rd. We will not have service again until worship and warfare, which is August 11th. So that's a long time. That's a long time. So you might want to make it in your plans, rearrange your plans to be with us on this Friday. Okay, let's jump right into this word of the Lord for tonight. We are talking about the power of rejection, the power of rejection. Watch this. Rejection. Let's let's listen to this definition. Rejection is the dismissing or refusing of an idea, a proposal or a person. Listen to it again. Rejection is the dismissing or refusing of a proposal, an idea or a person. Watch this. Feeling rejected is the opposite of feeling accepted. Oh, Lord, I'm going to say that again. Feeling rejected is the opposite of feeling accepted. Listen to this. But being rejected doesn't mean you're not liked. Oh, but watch this. Listen, listen, listen. Being rejected does not mean you're not liked. It does not mean you're not valued. And it does not mean that you're not important. Watch this. It just means, listen to this. This is so good to me. It just means that one time in one situation with one person or one group, things didn't work out and they rejected you. I'm going to say that one more time. If I am rejected by a group of people, that doesn't necessarily mean they don't like me. That doesn't necessarily mean that 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 um, it doesn't mean that they don't like me. It doesn't mean that they don't value. They, they, they don't value what I bring to the table. They're just dismissing it. Whoa, they're just dismissing me. They don't they're not saying we can't stand her. We don't we don't believe that the prophetic on her life. We don't we don't we don't value what she say. They ain't saying that. They just said at this point in time right here for this situation right here. We're dismissing you. We don't want nothing to do with you. We don't want to hear what you got to say. We don't even want you in the room. As a matter of fact, you're not part of this. Didn't say you're not valued. Didn't say we don't like you. We saying when you're rejected, listen to this going to bless y'all tonight. When you are rejected, watch this. It is because of, the, of a situation. It is because of a circumstance. Listen. It is, it, is a, it, is, it is because of a certain period of time, they don't want you involved. They don't want your opinion. They don't want what they, they, they don't care about. They don't care about what you bring into the table. They don't care about what you say. They don't even care about who you are. We just don't want you to have nothing to do with what we're doing right now. We don't want your idea to be involved with what we're doing right now. We don't want your opinion in what we're doing right now. That, my friends, is rejection. Oh, Lord, this is going to be good tonight. Listen, listen. But Jesus, ooh, God, I love this. I, 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 if, you, if you follow me on Facebook, you know I had kind of started messing with this. And the Lord said, pull it back, pull it back. I'm, I'm going to show you the revelation of that. So I had shared a little bit about this. Um, I talked about um, Eli and his sons. And, and Samuel being raised with them. And then I talked about Jesus having to go back to Nazareth where he was born and raised. They knew him as a little boy, but he was rejected there at home. Uh-oh. They didn't say, Jesus, we don't like you. Jesus, we, we don't value what you got to say. They just, they just rejected the fact that right now we don't need, we don't care about what you got to say. Right now, we don't care what you bring into the table. But watch this, watch it. Listen to this. Let's get into this text. Luke 4. Luke 4, Luke chapter 4. I'm trying to slow myself down, y'all. Luke chapter 4, 
Oh God. Verses 14 through 22. Luke, this smile is because when I get into the word, it just, it just does something to me. Luke fourth chapter verses 14 through 22. Watch this. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the spirit. Uh Oh, and news about him spread throughout the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth. Here we go. He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And on the seventh day, he went into the synagogue as his, as was his custom. He stood up to read and the scroll of the prophet. He, he's verse 17 and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it. Ah, oh God. Unrolling it. He found the place where it was written. Listen to what Jesus read. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind and to set the oppressed free. And verse 19, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Watch this verse 20. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue was fastened on him. Watch this. He began, verse 21, he began by saying to them, Today, ah oh God, today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Verse 22, all spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son? Oh God, isn't this Joseph's son? They asked, wait a minute. I just gave y'all, I just came back to my hometown. Y'all know me, listen. Y'all know me. I was born and raised here. And I'm reading the scriptures. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you about these scriptures that he's reading later. I'm, I'm, I'm reading these scriptures to you, telling you. Listen to the scripture again. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind and to set the oppressed free and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He rolled it up, gave it back to the attendant, and, he's, and, he, and he began by saying to them, today the scriptures fulfilled that you're hearing. They said, do y'all hear this tonight? They said, ain't that Joseph and Mary boy? Ain't, ain't that little boy that was running around here when he was a kid, all in the temple doing stuff? Ain't that him? Jesus just said, no, no, no. The scripture I just read, today it is fulfilled. I am he. Oh, God today. They didn't even get who Jesus was. Jesus said, I'm reading you. I'm reading from, I'm reading to you from what the prophet Isaiah said. Isaiah prophesied about me. I'm reading it to you and I'm, I came all the way back home to tell you I'm the man he's talking about. Oh God, listen to this. Not only am I the one, listen y'all, not only am I the one that Isaiah prophesied about, but look what I'm gonna do for you. I came home first because y'all are my people. I came back home. I came back where it all started. I came back to Nazareth. Remember they said, does any good thing come out of Nazareth? I came back home. Y'all about to be first partakers of this. I came back to proclaim freedom to all of y'all that's bound. To give sight to those that are spiritually and physically blind. And to set y'all depressed people. I came back to set you free. And to proclaim this is the year of the Lord's favor. I'm the one. And what did they say? Nah, ain't that Joseph's son? Who rejected? Rejected. They did. What did we say? Rejection meant. Watch this. Dismissing or refusing a proposal, an idea, or a person. They re, they dismissed that you the, you the one that Isaiah prophesied about. Nah, mm -mm. you married you Joseph's son. What are you talking about? Listen, they dismissed the whole idea that God has finally sent the one to set us free. Rejected by his own people. Uh-oh. By his own people. These not strangers. Uh-oh. Rejected. Why? Here we go. Here we go. Because they were too familiar with him. Oh, Lord have mercy. Drop that in the chat. Don't be too familiar. Don't get too comfortable with who God sent in your life as your mouthpiece. Don't get too comfortable. Oh, that's just peaches, girl. She just talking. I'm on the phone with people all the time and I hear them talking. They'll say words and I rephrase it for them. They'll say something 
girl, I'm sick in my body. I'm just going through. And I'll repeat it back. God is the healer. This is about to be a powerful testimony. Girl, I'm sick in my body. Just look over what I said. All right. Because I am the type. I, yes, I am a prophet sent by God. I know it. I breathe it. I live it. I eat it. I, that is who I am. Accept it. But watch this. I am not the type of person to say, God has told me to tell you. You could just be having a casual conversation with me and I just start, I just start going. You have to really know me because when you talk to me, I, anytime God starts speaking, I ain't going to say, oh, wait a minute. Hold up. God's speaking. That's not me. I just keep talking like I'm talking now. Listen, so, so, so it, when people become so familiar with you, they don't hear that. They don't hear that. They'll hear you. They'll, they'll hear peaches. They don't hear the prophet sent by God. So they get it confused. Same thing here. Here go Jesus back home going, going to tell his people, hey, y'all, it's me. I'm the one that Isaiah prophesied about. I'm the one that's coming to do all these things. When he said it, he said, Jesus told him. What did he say? Listen, to Jesus told him, he said, verse 21, he began by saying to them, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Then it says, they all spoke well of him and they were amazed at how well he spoke. And the words that came from his lips, they said, isn't this Joseph's son? Oh, Lord, have mercy. Do y'all hear that? Jesus, let, let me keep going. He says, so we're going to talk about the first thing that he came to do that they dismissed all week. I'm going to be, I want to, we're going we're to learn about the things that Jesus came back home to do for his people where he came from because he wanted them to be first partakers and they dismissed it. The first thing he came back to do, he says, I came to proclaim the good news to the poor. Oh, watch this. Verse 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. That means empowered me, entrusted me, gave me the power to proclaim good news to the poor. Oh, God. Drop in that chat. Drop in that chat. Mm. Good news to the poor. He came to his own and his own received him not. A prophet is not received in his own home. We hear these things over and over in scripture relating to Jesus. Rejection is a powerful thing. We always say rejection was for my protection. But do you understand what it really meant? Because there's some benefits to being rejected. And let me tell you something. Let me put a pin there. If you've been rejected, and I'm sure that most of y'all on here have, I have several times, many times, it's going to happen to you. Watch this. Once you realize that if, I, if they rejected Jesus, and Jesus said in his word to suffer with me is to reign with me, then I know I'm going to have to be rejected. They only reject the chosen. Uh-oh. If you're facing rejection, you are something special. If everybody, uh oh, if everybody love you, everybody accept you, everybody welcome you, you better check your character. You better check who you are because, baby, if you're walking in this thing called holiness, if you're walking in this thing called righteousness, you are going to ruffle some, some feathers. There are going to be some people that say, she just don't, mm -mm, mm -mm. nah. And I tell people all the time, baby, I may not be for you. And that's good. But I am called to a certain people. <laughs> I say, I may not be called to you. I may not be your cup of tea. That's all good. But there is a remnant that I'm called to. I said, so, so if I'm not your cup of tea, then you're not my people. I said, well, we, we can agree. We, we can agree on that. I'm called to a certain people. Watch this. And it says, it says, so Jesus returned to Nazareth in the power of the spirit. Jesus came from his time of testing right before this. Oh, God. Right before this, Jesus was tested. It says Jesus came from his time of testing stronger than ever. Could it be? Could it be? Oh, God, I hear you now. Check the times you've been rejected. Isn't it always after a test? Oh, God. Isn't it always after you have, have went through something, you overcome something, and then somebody reject you? You're like, wait, what? Huh? Oh, God. Right after G it says, Jesus said, he had, it, it says, Jesus came from his time of testing stronger than he had ever been. 
Though he was already filled with the spirit, Luke 4 and 1, he continued to walk in the power of the spirit after experiencing victory over temptation. He had went through a battle and he came out victorious. And as soon as he came out victorious, he said, let me go back and get my people. Went back to his people and his people rejected him. Mm. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Watch this. It says, he though through the grace of God, resist and overcomes temptation is always better to buy it. When you resist temptation, you are made stronger. When you resist temptation, you are made better. When you resist temptation, you can go face the next thing. Listen, you win over temptation. It says, it says, so he goes to Galilee first. It says he went to Galilee and the surrounding region. The region of Galilee was a fertile, fertile, progressive, highly populated region. According to, according to figures from um, the historian Josephus, there were, were about 3 million people in Galilee. Wait a minute. Let me go back. What did the text say? What did the text say? What did the text say? Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the spirit and the news about him spread throughout the country. So these people in Nazareth knew that the news about Jesus was already out. It says, verse 14, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the spirit and the news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in synagogues and everybody was praising him. Verse 16, he gets to Nazareth and he's rejected. You can be a wonder. Woo, God, I love you. You can be a wonder to the nations. And your own family won't even receive. Uh oh, uh oh. I'm walking heavy tonight. You can be a wonder to the nations. And your own family won't receive you. You can be a wonder to the nations. And the people right in your city that you grew up with. Child, she ain't no preacher. What? I don't believe it. You can be a wonder. They sing your praises all over the world. And you get to your people. Because you know God gave you a word that's going to set them jokers free. And they don't even receive. They reject you. How many times? I, I, I've experienced it. I, baby, if God give me a prophetic word for you, and I'm not bragging, I'm not boasting, none of that because all glory belongs to God. But if God gives me a prophetic word to give to you, and I give it to you, that is a check that you can take to the bank and they going to cash it. Watch this. I can give a prophetic word to a family member. I watch it. I've watched it unfold. I just sit back and like, <laughs> I don't get offended by it no more. I do not get offended by it no more. Well, I can give a prophetic word to a family member. God said he going to do A, B, and C. All you got to do is X, Y, Z. They'll say, okay. I will sit in a service. Watch another prophet woke up. Now, this, this may be weeks late. It's always a space of time between these things. Another prophet woke up, give them the exact same word, and they flipping out, sowing seeds, falling out. And I'm looking like, I literally just told you that like three weeks ago. And first of all, you ain't sold to me because I'm family. Okay, that's fine. But you just sold a $200 seed to them. I'm, I'm confused. Same thing with Jesus known all over the it says all of Galilee knew about him the word about him spread they were praising him they were telling how wonderful he is how, how he's flowing how he's doing like, got home and they rejected him all these people know listen to this all this preaching he did in Galilee he never said I came oh God help me he never said these words I came to proclaim freedom to the prisoners I came to recover sight for the blind. I came to set the oppressed free. I came to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He didn't tell them that he saved that for home. Ooh, and home rejected him. Home said, we'd rather stay bound. Home said, we want to know about the Lord's favor. Familiar. Familiar. Familiar when you are familiar. Watch this. Watch this. Let, let me keep going. It says, it says, it says, he taught in the synagogues. Jesus focused in, Jesus's focus in ministry was teaching 
And at the and at this early point in his ministry, he had no organized opposition, being glorified by all. He didn't have no haters. He had he, he didn't have them Pharisees after him at this point. He was coming. He had no opposition. He I came home. I'm going to tell my people. I that, that, that I, I'm here now. I came to set you free now. I don't have no troubles about who trying to kill me, who trying to cruise. I don't have those troubles right now. I just got to get back home to get my people safe. And when I get there, my people reject me. Who Jesus, watch this. It says, it says, it says, Jesus comes to his own synagogue in Nazareth. In Nazareth. Listen, since this was early in, in the ministry of Jesus, it was not long. It was not long from the time he had lived and worked in Nazareth. So it's, this was early in his ministry. So this ain't like they don't know who he is. They said at the end, ain't that Joseph's son? So they knew who he was. Listen, the people of that village knew him. He had probably done work. Remember, he was a carpenter. He learned his trade from his daddy. He was a carpenter and a builder for many of them. They knew him. They knew him as Jesus, Joseph's son, Mary's son. The cop, that boy did some work for me. What are you talking about? He just sent one chapter. Uh-uh. Too familiar. Lord have mercy. Watch this. And it says, Jesus made it his custom to get together with God's people for worship and the word of God. So he stood up and he read the usual order in the synagogue always began with an opening of prayer and praise and then a reading from the law and then a reading from the prophets and then a sermon, perhaps from a visitor. This is, I'm going to say that again. So all these things could have came from a visitor. Watch this. On this occasion, Jesus was the learned visitor. He was visiting home. He is a visitor. Watch this. Since it was in Nazareth, Jesus would have attended it often before. And now he would read and teach in his hometown synagogue. Watch this. And he read the scriptures from the prophet Isaiah. These same scriptures are in Isaiah 61, 1 through 2. Same scriptures. Jesus is reading the, he's reading the scriptures from the prophet Isaiah to the people. Watch this. And he begins by saying, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. What is, when, he, when Jesus opened up, he's telling them, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. What does that mean? The one speaking in this Isaiah passage is the anointed one. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me. I am that person. Woo, Jesus, watch this. And he says he has anointed me to, to do this. Watch this. And then he says, this is, it says in this prophecy, the Messiah is announcing that he came, listen, he came to heal the five-fold damage, mm, the five-fold damage that sin brings. Sin does great damage, and so there must be great, and so there must be a great redemptive work. What is the five-fold damage? Watch this. The poor, to preach the gospel to the poor, the brokenhearted, the captives, the blind, the oppressed. And then I'm going to tell you, I'm going to proclaim, <laughs> oh God, the acceptable year of the Lord. I'm going to read that again. Isaiah 61 and 61, 1 through 2. It says Jesus came, watch this. It says Jesus came to deal with the fivefold damage that sin brings. Five, listen to this. The damage that sin does. Listen to this. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, he, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to recover sight to the blind, to, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and five, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. He came, he sent me to do five things. Oh, God, listen. But what did they do? They didn't receive any of that. Oh, God, listen, listen. What does it mean? What does it mean? First thing he came to do, to preach the gospel to the poor. It says sin impoverishes and the Messiah brings good news to the poor. Sin makes you feel poor. Sin weighs you down. Sin will wear you out. Sin will take and take and take and leave you with nothing and laugh. Ooh, God, watch this. He said, but I'm coming to give you the good news. Oh, God. The gospel is the absolute core of true Christianity. Watch this. Paul himself tells us this writing to the Corinthians. He says in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 3, I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, 
For I delivered it to you as of first importance what I also re received. What is Paul saying? This is primary. This is the most important thing. If you don't get nothing else I ever say to you, you got to get this gospel. Listen, it says, if this gospel is so important, we must make sure that we get it right, is what Paul is saying. This gospel is so important that forget about everything else I said. You got to get this one thing right. Watch this. But what is the good news? The first thing Jesus said is I came to bring you the good news. What is the good news? Or what is it? Or to ask it another way, what is the problem that the good news offers to solve? What is the good news going to fix? Mm, drop in that chat. Good news. Good news. Good news. Watch this. But when the Bible talks about the gospel, when it tells us why Jesus died, it solves the problem of sin, not the problems of life. Listen, the gospel deals with a bigger issue, the sin problem. The gospel deals with sin, the thing that's going to separate you, the thing that's going to alienate you, the thing that's, that, that Satan uses, sin. The gospel deals with it. Watch this. Ephesians 2, and I'm giving you a lot of scriptures tonight. Ephesians 2, 2 through 7 says, as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is at work, who, who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us, all of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving wrath. Mm. By nature, we deserved wrath. But because of his great love for us, who is rich, but for his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgression, when we were dead in sin. It is by grace you have been saved. And God, and God raised us up with Christ, listen, God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. The good news. <laughs> well, God, watch this. This is our ultimate problem. Watch this. We are sinners. And so by nature, and I'm, when I say by nature, I mean by choice. And so by nature, we are children of wrath. By nature, we're born, in, we're born into sin. We're born into a world of sin. By nature, your flesh don't want to do nothing, right? It says, watch this. And that is the problem that Jesus said, I'm coming to deal with first. This problem of sin. The gospel is going to deal with sin. The gospel, drop that in the chat. The gospel deals with sin. Watch this. God himself has dealt with the sin problem. God the son has died. Listen to this. God the son, Jesus, has died in our place taking the penalty that our sins deserve. He died in my place. He took the penalty that sin deserved so that I can't, so that, so that I might receive acceptance from God the Father. This is the gospel. This is the grace of God on display. When we say to preach the gospel, I'm preaching that Jesus came, he died and he died for me. So now I got a right to salvation. Paul told him, he said, if you don't get nothing else right, you got to get this part right. You got to understand that Jesus came for this, for this main purpose, sin. He had to deal with sin once and for all. Adam and Eve couldn't do it. Oh God, watch this. Watch this. Receiving the gospel, watch this. Receiving the gospel is not a solution to your every, every human problem. There are times that faithfulness to Jesus will increase our pro, will increase uh, will increase our horizontal problems, but receiving the gospel solves our most important problem, making us right with God through Jesus Christ. In other words, in other words, they rejected the one that could make them right. They rejected the one that could make them in right standing. What did Jesus say? He said, let, let me go back. I got to keep going back to this. I got to go back to this. I got to go back to this. Luke 4, 4, 14 through 22. And we get down to verse 
17, 18. He sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind. Listen, and to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Listen, Isaiah said it this way. Isaiah said it this way. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. I'm preaching about sin so y'all can receive all these other five things. We got to deal with the sin issue first. But when I'm coming to tell y'all how to be free, but we got to understand that, that, that I came to cast. I'm, I'm going to be the sacrifice for y'all. Do you understand that? Do you understand the gospel? He says, I'm coming to do all this, but do you understand that? Because we think preaching the gospel, you're just going to go out, you're going to preach the word of God. Baby, if you, don't, if you don't preach him being buried, died, and resurrected, you're not preaching the gospel. The gospel is the good news. The good news is that my God, God sent his son, Jesus, he died for me. And now I have a right to the tree of life. Now I have a right to be saved. Now I have a right to go behind the veil because of what he did. If I don't understand that, everything else is null and void. Ooh, God. And what did they do? They rejected the one that had dead. Listen, thank you, Holy Spirit. They rejected the one that had the key to life. They rejected the one that had a solution for every problem. Listen, listen, watch this. It says, it says, I got to keep moving here. Rejection, watch this. In fact, watch this. In fact, <clears throat> Rejection created the need for the gospel in the first place. Sin entered the world because two people rejected God. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, Lord, help me. Help me, help me. Watch this. I'm going to say that again. Rejection. Listen to this. Rejection is the reason why the gospel was needed anyway. Adam and Eve rejected God. So now I got to send my son. <laughs> God. To make things right. Watch this. Adam and Eve rejected God and his command. Then in turn, they faced God's eternal rejection. We also were placed under a curse of separation from his favor and bound to this wrath. But, but he sent Jesus to deal with this rejection and sin once and for all. Listen, the apostles refer to Jesus. Also, as the stone that was rejected, the stone that the builders rejected, my God, watch this. And he is now the chief cornerstone. Oh, God. Jesus was the stone that the builders rejected. But now he's the chief cornerstone. Stone, stone. He is the one that's holding everything in place. Listen, my daddy was a brick mason. Oh, God. My daddy was a master brick mason. That was his thing. Him and all his brothers. My, my my granddaddy, my granddaddy, Leroy Paul and Sr. taught my daddy and all his brothers how to be brick masons. But my daddy was a master brick mason. I remember we would ride over Charlotte and he would show me all these beautiful buildings. He said, yeah, I, I, I built that. He said, I built that. Uh, I bricked that building right there. He said, but you know, he said, I had to make sure. He said that, that every brick was in place. Oh, God. Every big brick was in place. They had to be at a certain level. He said, sometimes I had to get the plumb line. Oh, God. Sometimes I had to get the plumb line out to make sure that everything was level. And my daddy would always show me. So you see that brick? And we, we, we would go into buildings all the time. And he would always look at the brickwork and say, yeah, that brick right there is out of place. I said, what that mean? He said, the foundation ain't good. I said, huh? He said, the brick out of place, the foundation ain't good. I said, okay, daddy. And, and so it's like now all these things coming back to me. So if Jesus is the, the if Jesus is the Jesus is the chief cornerstone, that means he holding everything in. <sighs> the stone that the builders rejected is now the chief cornerstone. He's the one that's holding. If he wasn't there, nothing else would be able to fit. If he wasn't there, the building wouldn't stay. Oh, God. If he wasn't there, the building wouldn't stay. But I'm the one that you rejected. Listen, I'm going to tell some of y'all tonight, the people that have rejected you, you are their answer. Oh, Lord. That's why you can't get mad because they reject you. Because watch this. They're going to come back. They're going to need you. They're they going to find a way back in. They're going to make it right. And that's good. That's fine. But understand, you can't get all bent out of shape when you face rejection. 
Because watch this. You, when you are rejected, what did God say in the beginning? What did the Holy Spirit say? You are in good company. I'm the chief cornerstone that the builders rejected. I went back to my home telling them that I came to set them free of everything that they would ever face and they rejected me. And you whining and complaining because they treat you a little different. Ooh, God. He says, the apostles referred to Jesus also as the stone that was rejected. And he is now the all important chief cornerstone of the kingdom. Oh, God, not a building. The chief cornerstone of the kingdom. Listen to this. I'm going to give you one benefit of rejection. I'm going to talk about the five stages of rejection. And then we're going to get off of here. Listen, so we can get back up early at 6 a.m. and go before the Lord in prayer. So listen, one, every day I'm going to give you a benefit of rejection. Uh, benefit number one, rejection, listen to this, rejection is your protection, rejection is your motivation, watch this, rejection should motivate you to do better, when you know you got the answer, when you know you got the solution, when you know you could really help and they reject you, it should motivate you, watch this, when confronted with rejection, this can be a sign that you need to be doing something that you're not doing. You need to be doing something that you're not or, watch this, or stop doing something that you are. Whenever you are rejected, the first thing you need to do is look at you, look in the mirror. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, they didn't want me. If, it's, if, if, if it is the case, watch this. If it is the case, they are rejecting me because what I'm bringing to the table, they don't want. Now what I need to do is go back to what I was bringing to the table and see, wait a minute, can they handle what I'm bringing to the table? Is this beneficial for what I'm bringing to the table? Is this their season to receive what I'm bringing to the table? Then I'm gonna go back to God. I'm like, wait a minute. Did you really tell me to go to that person? Uh-oh, was it you that sent me there? Was it you that told me to give them this information? Watch this. And I'm gonna wait on my answer from God. Then it says, it may be that I need to stop what I'm doing. So watch this. Sometimes when you are rejected by people, it could be you need to find your different crew. It could be those people not ready for you. Remember, I opened up and I said, sometimes they ain't ready for you. Some people say, you, you oh, you too much. Did right, then I'm not your person. And you're not my people. You have to realize that some, you're not going to be accepted by everybody. They may reject you and come back around later when they can handle you. Woo, God. They may come back around later when they can handle you. They may come back around later when they have matured. They may come back around later when now is the season for you to do what you need to do in that ministry. Watch this. Rejection shouldn't motivate you. Figuring out what that is will put you on the path to do better and to do better in your life. To do better. Watch this. When I figure out, maybe this ain't the right time for me to be with this group. And I'm okay with that. Maybe they're not ready for what I bring to the table. And I'm okay with that. Or maybe that ain't what really that ain't what God's saying. Is that who he really sent you to? Mm. Maybe this is my sign to get out. Uh-oh. Maybe this is my sign to go back to God and go back and pray and fast and pray. So you got to understand when, I, when you're doing all those steps, you're going to make yourself better. Watch this. There are five stages of rejection. And I'm going to talk about these every day. So I don't want to um, talk about it too much tonight. So there are five stages of rejection. It says your first stage is denial. Your first reaction to discovering that someone is rejecting you is disbelief. And people know I always say, am I getting pumped? Like, is this really happening? Like, like I really just gave you the word of the Lord. I really just told you that God said X, Y, and Z. And you're like, nah, God ain't say that. Re okay. So your first step is always going to be denial. Watch this. Step two is going to be anger. You get mad. Honey, I ain't fooling with them no more. I don't know. I done told them one time. You know, let them go on out there and follow. You get mad. If that's you, say, Dr. Three, oh my God, that's me, that's me. We're going to deny it further. Am I getting pumped? Second, well, go on out there. Go on out there and, and see what happened to you. That's step two. Watch this. Third one is bargaining. We did, did, when I, I think when we get to three, three and four is the two that kind of, we, we get stuck here. Watch this. Three is we're going to bargain with you. Okay, you know, maybe I need to rephrase. This is why it's important that you go back to God during that initial rejection. 
to get what he says. Because the, the third stage is bargaining. Well, maybe I'm going to go up to him and I'm going to say it a different way. When you say it a different way, is that the way God told you? Maybe I'm going to go back to it to him and I'm presenting it a different way. Is that what God told you? Because you don't want to bargain. It's because when you start bargaining, now I'm leaning with what, what y'all accept. Now I'm leaning over to the side of what y'all say is okay. Now I'm leaning over to what y'all said. This is the way to do it. So right now, I'm not even I'm not even giving you what God gave me. I'm not even giving you what I'm bringing to the table. I have taken what I what, what God gave me and I twisted it with what God gave you. And now we good. No, you're not. You're bargaining. Woo, I know y'all. I know, I know, I know. Watch this. Then you get depressed. I went to them and gave them the word of the Lord. Then you got mad. Let them go on out there and mess up again. Well, I'm pray about it. And I'm going to just, you know, let, let me just go back and try one more time. Then you're bargaining with them. Now you're depressed because they still rejected you. You know what? I don't know why don't nobody want me. And I just feel like, you know, I mean, I don't know why don't nobody want me. I mean, I think I'm cute. I mean, I think I'm, I don't understand. You're bargaining. You're now you, you have bargained. That didn't work. Listen, your anger didn't work. The denial didn't work. You, your bargaining didn't work. Now you're depressed. You're arguing with them. It didn't work. Now you're in your feelings and you're depressed about it. Watch this. Last stage. After I get through all that, watch this. After I get through all that and I get myself together, because you will. You will. You, you don't. You, you don't. Watch this. If you notice, if you've ever been through rejection, you don't stay there too long. Watch this. You don't stay there too long. You somebody reject you, you're like, I bet. Because <laughs> you know we that's how we do. I bet. Watch when I come back. Watch when I come back. Watch when I come back. And we always come back better. I hope you do. I know I do. We always come back better. We always come back stronger. What did Jesus say? He came back full of the Holy Ghost. Watch this. And we know the story after this. Jesus went on to perform many miracles, signs, and wonders. We know. This rejection didn't stop him. Watch this. When we get to the last stage of rejection, which is acceptance. All right, you, reject, you, you, you um, rejected me? Cool. Guess what? I'm not your person. You not my people, so we good. Y'all over there, I'm over here. And that's just how I am. We good. You stay over there, I stay over here. If God say so, we'll come back together later. If God wants us to stay separate, we'll just be separate. But I'm about the kingdom, baby. It's kingdom work for me. It's kick. Listen, I don't know who this is for. If this is for you tonight, I'm gonna show you, my God, this week, you're gonna be done with rejection. You're gonna be done with rejection because Jesus said, honey, I walked it out. I walked it out before you. He said, Listen, the reason why the reason why I came was because of rejection. Because Adam and Eve rejected God, so God had to send me. Woo, Lord have mercy. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, rejection. You will deal with rejection in a healthy way. You will deal with rejection and you will come out stronger. You will come out better. But there are stages to this. No, you're not going crazy. No, you're not getting pumped. I told you, what did I say? The first thing I say, if I'm getting pumped, denial. Then we go through, we go through the denial. Then we go through the angry. Oh, I'm going to get them back. Oh, you rejected me? Bet. We go through that. Then we go through the bargain. Well, let me go back and try it a different way. Let me see if I can make it work. But that don't work. Then we go through the depression. We hurt our heart, bro. We all in our feelings. Then we go, then we finally accept it. I accept the fact that many people have rejected me, still doing it. I accept that. It's a part of life. It's going to happen. Am I mad about it? No. Nope. Am I upset about it? No. Nope. I'm just not your person. You're just not my people. I understand that I'm going to go through rejection and I'm going to come out stronger every single day time why because jesus himself went through it and he walked it out and he showed me how to walk it out listen if, if this word of the lord tonight was a blessing to you you may so i'm gonna drop it yeah you may so um with the information that's on the bottom of the screen cash app zale paypal any of those um listen i love you i love you i love you there's absolutely nothing you can do about it we will be back here in the morning somebody put in the morning 6 a.m Y'all, I hope I can do a teaching. I don't know. This morning, y'all know I flowed heavy in the prophetic for about an hour. The Lord just, he wiped us out this morning. Listen, in the morning, 6 a.m., I will be back on here in prayer. Um, join me, join me, join me, or catch the replay. But if you catch it live, you know, you, 
Never know what's going to happen on the live. So catch it live. Listen, I love you. I love you. I love you. And I look forward to seeing you in the morning. I look forward to seeing you on this Friday night. My God, our last service until August 11th. Listen, I love you. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Get your seed in the ground. Get your seed in the ground. You're already blessed. A hundredfold return to you in Jesus name. I love you.